This twist will blow your mind after years of insisting he wouldn't pardon his son, Joe Biden, finally did it. Sparking a political firestorm, the ladies on The View were quick to jump in doing all sorts of mental gymnastics to whitewash the move. Today, we're covering how Whoopi Goldberg and Anna Navarro were offering excuses and downplaying the backlash. In addition to how CNN and MSNBC were openly criticizing the decision. As always, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos just like this. I respect it as a parent. I understand why he would do it. Yeah. But I wonder to understand why lie about it for so long and, I, I, and, and secondarily, I would stop, but, I'd stop when, calling it a lie okay why repeatedly say you're not going to and you do and secondarily for the cut part of this country half of it that doesn't support biden doesn't know him personally doesn't get to have phone calls and they're just looking at a system that seems like it's only benefits the people who are in well power. i'm going to say what I'm, precedent does that set? well here's what it says it's a precedent for all of us to open our eyes because we've elected someone who is in a similar situation, who didn't have a drug problem, who knew what he was doing, who clearly was stood and said, I can do this, and he did it. So I think, for many, many reasons, this is very different than any other situation that we have ever dealt with. I agree with Alyssa, it was nothing but a lie. No matter how Whoopi wants to twist it, Biden made it crystal clear that he would not use his presidential power to pardon his son, and it wasn't in just one instance. Even the White House press secretary confirmed he wouldn't do it, fast forward to the aftermath of Trump winning re-election, and suddenly that promise has vanished into thin air. Here's the thing, whether you agree or disagree with the case, the fact remains that this auction set a dangerous precedent people already have a fragile trust in the government and its agencies, this move works towards undermining them even more. And let's be clear, this isn't just about Joe or Hunter, it's about the integrity of the presidency and the justice system, ensuring that it doesn't become a tool for personal gain. Anna Navarro did her own mental gymnastics as the topic came up on The View's podcast. I also think that people who say he lied are wrong, because when I spoke to him, and yes, I know a lot of people don't get to speak to the president of the United States, well, I do, so let me tell you about it. I don't think Joe Biden intended to pardon Hunter. I don't think Joe Biden would have pardoned Hunter had Kamala Harris won. I think Joe Biden pardoned Hunter now because he because Donald Trump won and because he sees the type of people that he is appointing to law enforcement for FBI, DOJ. So you know what? Thank God. Thank God he did that. And I am Sure, this was incredibly difficult for him to do. I've known Joe Biden for a long, long time. He's an institutionalist. He believes in institutions. And listen, Joe Biden hasn't done one thing to interfere with DOJ's investigation of Hunter until now. Okay, let's do a little exercise where we look up the definition of the word lie. Cambridge Dictionary defines it as, quote, to say or write something that is not true in order to deceive someone. While Dictionary.com has it as a false statement made with deliberate intent to deceive an intentional untruth or an inaccurate and untrue statement. So she can do all sorts of whitewashing she wants, but it doesn't change the fact that this move was wrong. Just think about it. If a president can pardon close family members under the guise of fear from political retaliation, what's stopping future administrations from doing the same? The message becomes clear. The rules apply to everyone else, but not the powerful elite. This undermines accountability and fuels the belief that there's one set of laws for the average citizen and another for those with connections. It also just reeks of reactionary politics. Pardoning Hunter right after Trump's victory would make it look like Biden's decisions are more about personal vendettas than upholding justice. If Trump's win rattles Biden so much that he abandons his word, what does that say about his leadership? Even the left's media outlets were furious with him and criticized the outgoing president nonstop. The president can support and believe in the legal system, but he also called this a politically motivated prosecution. Can the president, can, can both those things be true? I don't think there's evidence in this case that the special counsel who brought these felony charges against Hunter Biden, for which a jury uh, of his peers so found him guilty of, and brought the charges to which he pled guilty. I don't think there's any indication that the special counsel was right. motivated by politics. And I think Senator Bennett got it right. And as a member of Congress, I'm pretty angry because it's gonna be incredibly important that political leaders of both parties stand up for the independence of the Department of Justice, stand up to these attacks, 
suggesting that the, that the Department of Justice has become politicized. We need to stand up and fight for the independence of the Department of Justice, not to undermine it. And I think that's what unfortunately has happened in this case where the president, after months mm -hmm. and years of saying he would not pardon his son, has done exactly that. That's Democrat Congressman Greg Stanton, and he wasn't the only one on the left to call him out. Senator Gary Peters took it to X and posted, quote, President Biden's decision to pardon his son was wrong. A president's family and allies shouldn't get special treatment. This was an improper use of power. It erodes trust in our government, and it emboldens others to bend justice to suit their interest. Senator Michael Bennett also pointed out how this decision, quote, put personal interest ahead of duty and further erodes Americans' faith that the justice system is fair and equal for all. Well, Greg Landsman took a softer approach saying, quote, as a father, I get it, but as someone who wants people to believe in public service again, it's a setback. I've noticed, by the way, you still haven't liked the video or subscribed to the channel yet, so what are you waiting for? Scott Jennings also had similar thoughts, and he didn't hold back as he gave his two cents during an interview on CNN. I don't think that he was lying. I think he made a decision after the fact and decided this was the right thing for him and for his family. Period. Full stop. John, Donald Trump do decided that the minutes it was okay to pardon. Joe Biden, Corrine Jean-Pierre, how many minutes of tape do we have of both of these people telling the American people this will not happen? It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, we could play it all morning. It's a lie, and it's a lie to benefit his own family, that's and that's fine, all that it is. Just, and everybody who wait, went on just, TV and said, oh, look how, he's the modern George that. Washington. He's drained every ounce of credibility from every surrogate. If Corrine Jean-Pierre had an ounce of self-respect, she'd get off the plane in Africa today where they're going so he can avoid the press and resign. He's drained all of her credibility and everybody else who's defended this, it's okay. draining, draining for them okay. forever. Okay. Well, okay. And Karen, Karen, to be fair, we did, okay. Joe Biden, we did play that sound earlier, did flat out say on multiple occasions and the press secretary did that he would not pardon. Joe, uh, Hunter Biden. Yep, even CNN realized that this was an indefensible position. The president of the United States isn't just the leader of the country, he's a public servant. That's why at the core of the job, it's a commitment to prioritize the nation's interests above personal interest. It's safe to say Biden threw that out the window and you don't hear others talk about this, but the broad period that this pardon covers is a mind-boggling amount. Aaron Blake pointed it out in an analysis on the Washington Post, noting it covers a, quote, 11-year period during which any federal crime Hunter Biden might have committed, and there are none we were aware of beyond what has already been adjudicated can't be prosecuted. It notably covers when he was appointed to the board of the Ukrainian energy company Burisma in 2014, all the way through Sunday, well after the crimes for which he was prosecuted. I'm not saying or alluding to anything, just laying out this piece of information, which is pretty interesting. I'd love to know your thoughts on this, so let's get the conversation rolling in the comments down below. And by the way, if you want your friends to stay in the loop, please share the video with them. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.